Okay. Ah, uh, yes, here we are. Okay. I'm I'm just learning. I, it's so funny. I uh, I don't do these very often, and and so this is an edge for me. And technology, believe it or not, is kind of an edge for me. So I'm I'm still trying to open up to to all of this, and um, I just wanted to drop in and connect to some messages that were coming through very strongly. They've been coming through very strongly for me personally over the last few weeks. As some of you know, I've been doing some traveling and uh, this traveling was intentional because it allowed me to get out of my own way. And I do that quite often actually uh, with that intention. And that's part of my, my work is staying fluid, staying flexible, and hopefully assisting others in doing the same. So that being said, I felt very called to drop in today. And when I say called, I mean, have you, have you ever felt that push <laughs> from your higher self that says, do it, do it now? And it's not ego. I mean, there's a lot, there was sometimes where I would have to really check that when there's something that feels really uh, important or pressured or things like that. Sometimes you do have to check in and, and say, do I have some attachment to an agenda or what's happening? But today I really felt called to just follow that. And part of what I'd like to share today was what I learned and what really has been integrating for me personally over the last few weeks and probably longer. And the reason I wanna share it is because I feel that many of you are also <clears throat> going through something similar and that my sharing can hopefully be uh, helpful to you in your process, wherever you're at. So I'm right now live in my Facebook community called the Othera Method as a private Facebook community with some of the people that I've had uh, interaction with, whether in person or online, and are familiar with my work. Some of you have gone through the Yothera Method already. Some of you have not. But either way, I have a heart connection with everybody that's here, and I'm really grateful for that. Um, so part of what I wanted to share was parenting the body and why that's so important right now. And what do I mean by parenting the body? And I'm just closing my eyes because I really feel called to just kind of tap in and get out of my own way as far as an agenda around what wants to be said. I'm actually dropping into my heart space just to give context. This is super important and actually part of what I wanna speak about today. So part of parenting the body at this time requires us to understand our animal nature and that we are extraterrestrials in an animal body. That's really what it comes down to. So that's kind of a funny way of saying that, but we are, divine soul beings squished into a physical body. And this physical body <clears throat> has desires, wants, needs. It has drives. And part of this physical body that we're all navigating at this time is connected to something that I call the primal brain and you could call it the reptilian brain also. And what that means is our fight, flight, freeze response is obviously a protection mechanism that's wired into the body. So when the animal body senses threat, something like that will happen. There's fight, flight, or freeze. And actually what I feel called to share with you today about this process is that what I'm seeing most is actually the freeze response getting unfrozen. And I'll go into this more. But as I'm speaking about this, then a lot of times when, when I do, the, do things like this or work with people, I actually get images coming into my head as ways to assist me in sharing messages. 
So if I ever close my eyes or I take a pause, that's what's happening. And the image that I'm being shown right now is actually the vagus nerve. And so if any of you are, are connected to or have studied polyvagal theory, if you have not, you can do a quick you know, Google search on it um, if you'd like. But what I'm being shown is the vagus nerve. And, and actually I'll scoot back, but if you're watching the video right here, um, where you would, it's what you would call the solar plexus, maybe even a little bit above, it's between the belly button and the heart. So right below the rib cage, this is where the freeze response is happening in so many of us and collectively. So when the vagus nerve gets, uh, or I'll rephrase that, when the animal in us senses a threat, a lot of times because of the world that we're living in right now, we can't run, you know? And not only that, our brain knows that, you know, that we're not actually in physical danger, right? So our conscious brain, if you want to call it that, knows that we're not actually in physical danger. So running would be silly. So we talk ourselves out of that. So that's not an option, right? So fighting, you know, we don't, uh, well, that's to be debated, I suppose, <laughs> because that is what's happening. A lot of what's happening right now is fighting. But there's this other response that is being chosen by a lot of people, and that's the freeze response. And it's not happening consciously. It's on an unconscious level, this freeze response in our body, which I'm feeling intuitively at this moment is happening in this kind of the solar plexus area of the body, which is right below the rib cage. And if you can feel into that, that's where the vagus nerve is as well. And if you can even feel into that, a lot of individuals find that that area is extremely constricted. And so let me go into why it's so important that you understand what this is doing. If you're feeling in any way, shape or form that you have gone into the freeze response in the past year and a half, <laughs> you are not alone. It is a collective trauma that we are all working through together. As we're coming into unity consciousness together, we are all working through this collective freeze response. Now, this ways that we're working through this as we're as collectively we're trying to kind of melt I just see water melting, like we're wanting to melt this frozen energy and how that's coming out is through our voice, through our voices. And it doesn't take any, like any agendas off the table. We're just, I'm just talking about how so many of us have been called to share more of our voice. And the ways that that's coming out can be fighting. That can be part of it. But I would invite you to potentially see that even that is serving a step in the direction of melting this frozen energy of freeze response in our body. The goal would be that we begin to communicate from a different perspective or, or maybe not perspective, but a different platform of not trauma. That would be ultimately, hopefully where this is heading um, as a collective body of individuals that are seeking healing because every single one of us has been through trauma and every single one of us has in some way been re-traumatized this past year and a half in some way. And so what we're seeing is this collective shadow kind of coming up. So back to the body, this freeze response that's occurring in our bodies subconsciously or consciously, now that we're talking about it for some of you, is being, uh, what I see is it's being pushed up and out through our voices, our throat. And if you don't speak right now, there is a continuation of the frozen energy in that area of the body. And, and we know, <laughs> we know what happens with frozen energy in the body. Oftentimes it becomes disease. Oftentimes it becomes pain. Um, and so this, what I'm, what I've been shown and felt 
myself is that we're being asked to speak, 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 just, just speak without really even editing or worrying so much about whether you're going to be right or wrong, whether you're going to be criticized or not. There's this mass being set free, like setting yourself free and speaking anyway, not having to know the answers, not having to um, have it perfect, not all of that. And it's been kind of um, jarring for a lot of people. But what's happening is once you open the throat and once you begin that process, it actually starts to get refined is what I'm being shown. So there's a refining process. So at first I call it like with my clients, I'll tell them that it's overcorrecting the ship sometimes, right? So if you haven't spoken, if you haven't um, used your voice ever and you begin to, sometimes it starts to come out as kind of um, harsh or just, uh, yeah, it, it's not as fluid as you may feel that it is in your own mind. <laughs> so if that happens, that's great. You're starting the process though. It's, that's the beginning of healing. I would only say, you know, um, to, to be aware of, you know, your own projections because we all have that. And as you share, to only share from your own perspective instead of sharing from a space of um, all knowing or knowing what's best for another person or projecting um, pain, your own pain or uh, things like that onto another person. But as you begin to open the, the throat, here's again what happens. Now I'm gonna bring this back into the body again. The throat begins to open. And those of you that work with the body know that there is a direct connection between the throat and the sexual energy, that the sacral energy, the sacral and the root areas of the body. So that would be between the hip points and then the root, like where your body meets the earth. If you sat on the earth right now, that's the root. So as your throat opens, you actually begin to open this other area of the body. And what that, what that does as this area begins to relax, to feel at peace, to feel, I'm just seeing um, this whole relaxation of this channel. So we all have channel right from the crown, the central channel, energetic channel running all the way down our body starting at the crown all the way down, third eye, throat, heart, solar plexus, sacral, and root. And as that channel opens, there's all these openings. That's when we become a conduit, if you could want to call it that. You, you can become a conduit for more insight and intuition. And so um, I also want to add right now that it's important to understand that our if we are in fight flight freeze on any level then the parasympathetic nervous or excuse me the sympathetic nervous system is on it's really difficult to come into alignment in this way in the body it's extremely difficult and where, where we are moving i feel is as we begin to heal these wounds of trauma and holding and constriction in our bodies that we actually begin to live constantly in our parasympathetic nervous system, which is a state of ease and flow and abundance and joy and vitality and lightness. That's what it feels like to me in my own body. Now, I haven't gotten there yet, <laughs> clearly, but as I feel into where I feel like we're going, as we begin to parent our bodies, our animal bodies, this becomes more available. Now, what do I mean by parent your animal body? I mean that when you become tangled or triggered by something that causes fight, flight, freeze in the body, you are able to recognize that that's the animal body being triggered 
also could be the ego. You could call it the ego getting triggered and attached to something being right or wrong or being um, of that nature. And by parenting that, that means bringing your higher self, or you could call it your wise self, you could call it your, your higher soul aspects, being able to come back into a parasympathetic state on your own without having your external world change, without having that person apologize, without having to know exactly what's going to happen next, that you're able to come back into your state of relaxation and flow and ease and help parent the body back to safety in every moment. And that brings me to the next, um, the next thing that I feel like really needs to be shared right now is that being fully present in only what's happening right now is essential for this alignment to begin to happen. This alignment to your higher purpose, your higher self stepping in. And that is something that I feel very strongly is happening for a lot of us is our higher self is starting to step into these animal bodies and it's starting to take the wheel. It's beginning to really guide your journey. Now, the key with this is that if you're in your own way, meaning if you have agendas, if you have like big plans <laughs> for yourself that you're grasping onto so tightly, it's going to get really difficult to get out of the way and really be on track and in alignment with exactly where you're supposed to be and exactly what you're supposed to be doing and the people you're supposed to be meeting. And if you're in that fight, flight, freeze, I have to control, I have to stay on track. This is the plan and I'm grasping onto it with everything. That's going to get in the way of actually allowing you to begin to trust that you, there, there is absolutely nothing that you need to figure out right now. There's nothing on your journey that you need to figure out with the mind. There is only being more with what is. And as you are more with what is, that's as you come in more, more into alignment with, with soul. And a, alignment meaning your, and this is something that I recently learned from a dear teacher of mine, and it's a practice that I do, that I'm going to be doing every day. And what she taught me was that you can get very attuned to your, your mind, your emotions, and your body. And you can check in with each one of these areas multiple times a day, or at least once a day, and notice which one of them may be out of alignment. And what, what does that mean? Which, which one of them feels not at peace? Is it the body? Is it the mind? Is it the emotions? And if there's anything out of alignment, that means that you're not actually present. You're not actually available for what your soul has already laid out for you. Now, I understand that I'm speaking from my own belief system here. And my belief system is that we've already made contracts. We've already set up a plan for ourselves in general doesn't mean that we don't have free will and that random things don't come in and out. But in general, my belief is that our soul has already set up points on our journey and we don't have to figure it out. We just have to get out of the way in order to be in alignment and on purpose. And the more we can drop into that parasympathetic space, the easier that becomes the easier it gets. So I'm just going to take a breath and feel into um, more around that. I feel like there's more that maybe wants to come in around that. What I'm being shown right now is the heart and how important it is to include the heart, to include daily gratitude 
Um, now, what, how this is important in, in um, parenting the body is that the heart, and I teach this in Yothera Method, I, I teach this with my clients, um, and they teach it with their clients. And that's so exciting to say at this point. <laughs> so I've got this amazing first cohort that's about to graduate in December, and I'm just so proud of them. Um, so the heart and the Taurus field of the heart, if you're familiar with heart math, so another thing that we teach. And if you are able to, it's a way of coming into coherence and alignment very quickly is using the electromagnetic field of the heart. It's the strongest vibration that we can drop into at any present moment that immediately clears distortions in our field. And as we're willing to only be present um, present in the moment in our heart space with gratitude, the easier it becomes to really see what's next on our path. And again, I would really encourage you if you're watching and haven't heard of heart math, you can actually even look on YouTube. There's some, um, you can look up heart coherence, heart math, heart coherence, and you'll, it'll, it's, it's an easy practice in general, but um, there are specific ways to use the breath, to breathe in and out of the heart space, to expand that area, noticing any blocks in that area. And as that energy center begins to build and become bigger, the frequency is able to dissolve anything that's not in alignment with your soul, with your soul's path, with your, just your organic alignment. And it's beautiful. It's, it, it, it as Sandra Walters, she's one of my um, favorite teachers, as she would, as she would say, uh, this is a way of self-correcting your reality in such a, a fast way that realities begin to self-correct. Meaning if there's any distortion in the field, whether it's uh, something outside of you or something inside of you that you're projecting outside, as you come into heart coherence, which is fully present in the present moment, things dissolve. Problems that were there no longer are, are there. There's no, there's, because they're not in alignment with that vibration that you're inviting in to the present moment. So I'm just seeing that heart coherence and your ability to really be fully present with the body is so important right now and really asking, and this is something that I'm committing to doing as well and I've been doing, is really asking the body, what do you really want? What do you really want? And getting out of autopilot is key to it's key to parenting ourselves through this time. And sometimes I, I'm also just being called to speak to the more healing that you do on yourself, the more present you are, the wants of your body begin to change. And what do I mean by that? you'll potentially begin to want different food. You may want less food. You might want more water. You may want more movement. You might want more rest. You may want your environment to be different because as we begin to parent our bodies, and again, what I mean by that is as we allow our higher self or soul self to come into physical form, it begins to kind of take over a little bit. And we need to be willing to surrender to that so that we can recognize when we're actually acting out of that animal, um, that animal uh, habit, because that's all it is, just habits, things that we think we need that are outdated, things, uh, activities, foods, uh, ways of being in the world that are actually outdated. So I'm just checking in again. 
<laughs> you know, um, I know I'm in, a, I'm live in a Facebook group right now and I can't see if there's comments. So um, yeah, what I may do is go ahead and check my phone and just see if there is. And I know I went live pretty quickly. Um, and so maybe there, there may not be a lot of people on, I'm not sure, but hopefully uh, those of you that are listening to this later, please feel free to put a comment uh, or a question. Uh, if you are watching right now, uh, please feel free to drop a question and maybe I'll take a minute to do some Q&A. And, and um, if you're watching later, please drop a question as well in the comments and then I can um, also address that in the comments or I can get on and do another live. So I will check uh, in just a moment, I will check my phone and <laughs> see if there's any um, anything that I can respond to at this time. I also wanted to just speak to the purpose of this group again. Uh, um, this group is uh, primarily for individuals that wish to not only learn about your Thera method uh, and integrate it into their life, maybe they wanna take the classes, maybe they want to do the certification, but this group is also for people that are searching for a like-hearted community. Uh, and as you know, this, uh, my training and everything that's come through me, it feels to be a bridge for um, healing of mental health, physical health, and mostly spiritual and soul alignment. And the ways that that's been coming through has, um, I've had to get out of the way <laughs> a lot, I had to get out of the way. And actually recently, um, you know, many of you have, you know, followed my, my journey as a mental health therapist and then kind of stepping into these other realms. And, um, and even recently I've had to practice what I preach, which is to, uh, step out of the way and allow, just allow my work to, to be informed only by whether or not I am in alignment with, with my full body. Yes. Is what I call it. Full body. Yes. Uh, meaning mental, emotional, physical are all in alignment and it's a yes. So that means that sessions change, like how I show up for sessions, how I show up for clients, how I'm in service to the world changes. And you may find that as well as you step more into fully surrendering and fully saying yes to being in alignment, you might find that life gets a lot more flowy. Life gets a lot less structured and there's a lot more trust and, and surrender, trust and surrender. And actually, I have found that I am 10 times, 100 times more supported than I am if I ever had to enforce a structure in my future. And I've done that before and I've learned some hard lessons around um, trying to take control <clears throat> of my path. <laughs> so, um, so if you've been wanting to have a session, just understand and know that my, my work right now is really to just be in alignment and um, and the and information is continuing to come in around what that's going to look like. So let me check my chat. Let's see. Oh, okay, just a minute. Cool. Okay, I don't think there is anything. If you feel called to drop a question after watching this, please feel free. And it was a joy to connect with you. Um, please continue to, to watch this group because um, many people are going to be um, sharing their new stories and things that they've been through and uh, how their old stories have transformed into their new stories. So check that out. You know, Past members are sharing um, on, this, on this group. And it's really inspiring. So I'll be sharing more about that in future videos if you're more interested in learning about your Thera method and uh, writing your new story. I actually have a, a really exciting offering coming down the pipeline very, very soon. So stay tuned um, for that as well. Uh, it's a, sel a self-guided journey um, called Embody Your New Story. So stay tuned for that. That's coming in the next few days, actually. 
So thank you for allowing me to drop in. It was great to feel you and I hope to continue to stay connected. Bye for now.